can we just stick on uh, Unreal Engine 5? So I uh, watched, I watched a bunch of stuff, but the state of Unreal in GGC 2024, <laughs> I, I was uh, uh, just giggling with excitement watching some of this stuff. So just if you can talk about different things here, just to nerd out a little bit. So and people should go watch this video. They 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 talked about the dirt. Uh, just the ultra realistic, and this is for uh, Marvel 1943, uh, which is kind of putting the Marvel universe into Nazi occupied France uh, in the winter. <laughs> so there's snow. And you know, that that's a moment in history that's a very intense moment in history. And it really creates a feeling and puts you there. And there's so much to that, including the snow, but just you know, looking at the dirt is a really nice way to show like, how do you add a lot of details to a scene in real time that like ha gives this experience like infinite detail, like this is real, this is super real. And then I think in the talk they describe like, what it what's entailed in the uh, the 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 generation of the geometry? What's entailed in the lighting? All that kind of stuff. Maybe can you speak about dirt? <laughs> what's what what are what are the components for people who might not know in like creating this ultra realistic the texture, the lighting, the geometry, all of that? Like how nanite, how lumen all come together in this beautiful orchestra to paint in real time the dirt in Nazi occupied France in 1943. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot happening here on screen and uh you know the real hero of of this image isn't uh epic it's the artists and technical artists who mm -hmm. work together to build this environment because it uh, and the reason we showed it at GDC was it went way way beyond what we uh realized the system was capable of doing um you know largely because of their brilliance. And this is the magic of computer graphics. There's not one feature that makes this cool. There's a dozen technical features that each interplay. Um, and because of the ways that they interplay with each other, you really don't, it's hard to actually identify the individual components of it. One thing that's happening here that's really critical, oh yeah, now we're seeing it being turned off, is uh, mm -hmm. the lighting happening. The lumen lighting system that's powering the scene is doing different kinds of lighting calculations at different scales. Uh, this was the work of uh, Daniel Wright uh, following a decade of moving the state of the art of lighting forward. But his his theory, which uh, was rather controversial at the time, was that if you have enough uh, levels of lighting uh, calculation, um, then you can get everything, global illumination working everywhere from the absolute highest levels of a scene, you know, that buildings are casting correct shadows all the way down to details like you see on the dirt here. Uh, all working in concert and without distinguishable boundaries. So there is you know, a good decade of, of foundational work there to make the lighting work. And in particular, when you see the very detailed shadows uh, interplaying between the, you know, the ice and the dirt there, mm -hmm. uh, that's screen space lighting. Uh, there's actually shadow calculation going on, uh, not based on the world, but on the pixels on the screen. Uh, because that is the only way that we could possibly do those calculations fast enough, running them in a pixel shader. Yeah, watch this. Watch, watch the, when you add the objects, when you add the textures, the different layering, all the shadows that have to be computed. Yeah, Boy. yeah. Boy. <laughs> that shadowing's the amazing thing, but, you know, the, the reason that works is counterintuitive. When somebody first explained it to me, I was like, that's really clever, but I don't think that will work. Uh, yeah. But it does work uh, because if you observe uh, the positions of incoming lights and uh, you know the Z coordinates of the different pixels on the screen, you can figure out how your know, geometry there uh, is likely to occlude other geometry. Mm -hmm. And even though it's only an approximation and not, isn't perfect, uh, it looks perfectly good to the human eye and gives you the subtle shadowing um, that you see in a scene like this that it makes it look highly realistic. And the shadowing influences other things. There's also you know, some really interesting things happening with the color here. And I'm not even sure what's causing, you know, it looks like color is bleeding from some parts of the snow onto other parts of the snow. It looks like there's some subsurface scattering going on. I'm not even sure if that's being used in this scene. And then there's a material layering system for laying down, you know, layers of material, dirt, and 
um, snow and other things, uh, all making that work. And then there's the light bouncing off of uh, the geometry, which is another system for lighting on top of the uh, global illumination system. What about reflections too? Is that is that count as uh, the light bounce? So there's a light bouncing off of stuff to light it up in different interesting ways, but then there's also actually literal reflections in like we're looking at a puddle in the dirt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the engine supports a number of different reflection techniques. One is uh, calculating basically textures that reflect, that capture all the lighting in the scene, and then bouncing that off of uh, texture maps so you can see different lights bouncing off of different pixels in different ways. And then there's individual lighting uh, casting reflections off of things too. And a lot of this is under the control of designers. And you know, one of the things that's yet, uh, yet to do problem for the future is uh, you don't just like press a few buttons in this kind of scene magically appears. This is a lot of work uh, mm -hmm. from some highly skilled people, not only building out this particular scene, but in setting up the material layers so that you get the dirt with the ice layered on top and all the reflections working. And they had to make a number of technical art decisions to make this work. And if a novice who hadn't you know, worked very hard built the kind of scene like this, it wouldn't look nearly as good. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges we have is to make building this kind of uh, quality level even easier and more seamless and automatic. You'd like to just build a scene and say, use this material here and have this appearance come out of it. Yeah, and I mean, once you create the scene, you could do things, I remember where, where they said like, can you turn off the headlights? Uh, I forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could control the lighting. I mean, all of this we should say, like, I mean, this is dynamic. So you could change the position of the light, you could turn on the lights and yeah. off the lights. That's incredible. So this is all real time. The geometry, the lighting, the textures, all of it, real time. This is this is the power of awesome technical art, three decades of feature development, and uh, like you have to give credit to also to the 20 teraflops of <laughs> graphics performance that NVIDIA is delivering. Thanks, <laughs> NVIDIA. <laughs> 90 megahertz to this. 90 megahertz is 90 megaflops. This is 20 teraflops. That, that's a big change. That's a lot. So one of the other things uh, that they talk about in the presentation is about snow. So you have to, if you're talking about 1943 Nazi Germany in the winter, you know, uh, there's a, you have to create a feeling one of which is the season, the the winter, the cold. And uh, you can control the, you know, you have to cover everything in snow. And here shown is the ability to control how much snow covers the objects. So this, th that, you know, the, the ability to do that for the artist is incredible. Like just to control how much snow is in the scene dynamically like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool, cool. It's a cool system for material layering and a dozen pieces coming together here. You also notice, you know, there's fogginess and there's some hot objects emanating fog. You know, an artist did that. That that didn't just arise automatically. So that's called material layering. So an artist creates the different materials and are able to uh, like layer the scene with it. Yeah, layer materials on top of each other and see how much of each material should be uh, protruding in different places with the engine handling transitions and things like that. And that's on top of the sort of the geometry that creates that, that creates the, the structure of the scene, and all the occlusions that have to be computed. I mean, yeah. okay, I got to go to the other one that was just blowing my mind, which is uh, smoke. Let me see that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the the there's a fire. There's a fire in the, in a in in a trash can with the smoke. And the, sh the the shadows, the lighting and the shadows interplaying on the smoke. Is it? This is real time. Yeah, that's all real time. What the hell? <laughs> so how do you do that? Was that <laughs> how do you do the smoke? Well, there's a really powerful particle system underneath. It's providing the the technological foundations for this sort of thing. But there's our awesome artistry on top of that, um, uh, and an awesome physics engine powering it. Um, it's hard to tell exactly which piece is doing what, um, yeah. but you have several different particle systems there. There's one for the um, fire, and then there's another one for the smoke coming out of it. Um, the really interesting thing happening with the smoke here is that it's occluding the light. You know, there's calculation of how the light should diminish as it travels through smoke, and so you're seeing the lighting on the smoke being the really interesting thing. 
and you know, there have been a lot of attempts, but this is this was the first demo where I felt felt like this kind of smoke had really no longer looked like a video game. It looked like just you know a burning trash can uh, billowing out dark smoke. Um, and uh, yeah, the, it's the, the it's the artist's sophistication. Um, it's a very 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 large part of it. So yeah, again, it's the interplay between the tooling and the and the, and the artist. But yeah, like that, I could I could watch that for a long time. I mean, th there's there's something magical uh, sitting around a fire in in real life and just watching the fire and the smoke. I mean, humans have been doing that for I don't know um, hundreds of thousands of years, maybe. Uh, and then that same, I was I was just staring at that. And uh, I wish the people would just stop talking and I could just watch the fire <laughs> infinitely. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's immersion. That's like, I want to be in that. I want to sit around that trash can with the fire and the smoke and, and watch and maybe warm my, because I, I was also feeling cold because of the snow. You're like, you really get immersed into the thing. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's true art. It's true art. It's just really wonderfully done.